So I think in terms of getting getting information as a as a person who's being critiqued, you get the information. Then there's a step. There's another step where you go back at your desk and you sit in silence and you think, okay, what am I going to do with this information? Right. There's always that magic translating process that happens with anything as a good problem solver, as a designer. You can't have a client meeting. The client says, I want orange couches and blue walls and green lamps. Okay. Whoop. Goes right in there. Guess what? Check, 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 check. We got those things. It's, can't do that. And so, that, so first thing I think, yeah, that's totally right. After you're done with your presentation, before you go celebrate with your friend, take like half an hour, sit down in a quiet spot and like write down <laughs> everything that you remember that they've said about your project. Not that you're going to follow exactly what they said to finish it or redo it or whatever, but just put it down on paper so it, it doesn't fly anywhere, right? Yeah. And then the next step is then to go kind of, celebrate. Then go celebrate. <laughs> and then the next day, wake up and go back to the, those notes and actually try to uh, extract the, 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 the main essence of those notes. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's not about like the specifics of it. It is more about, well, what was the big idea behind what they said? That's really what's going to be constructive for your next review. Not right. so much that you should have put a door here instead of there, but more like, oh, maybe you should have thought about it differently or in your process, you missed a step and therefore that took you there instead of here, you know? I think this also goes back to the understanding anything in terms of the three layers of the why, the how, and the what. And a lot of times feedback just focuses on the what. Move the door, the store shouldn't be like that. Right. If you're a student and you just take the what and you make the what happen, does it doesn't work. You need to understand, you need to be a detective and think about, okay, how should I go about doing this, right? And why did the person say this? That's a really big thing. Why did they say this? And and a lot of time I think students think that after they're done presenting and they're done with their critics, that's it. The work is done. But no, actually it's not really done you really have to do that extra step after you're done presenting mm -hmm. taking those notes down and thinking about what happened to really use that for the next one and yeah. that might sound like oh wow well, like these people are crazy like no one does that after reviews well guess what no everyone should be doing that because that's really what's no, everybody it's really what's so, gonna help you otherwise what you're, you're hoping you're gonna grow organically in the right way <laughs> you know right. like <laughs> no you're not right right <laughs> Um, that's where also for the I, for, for my students, if there's a review, I always have a meeting at the end of the review with the class to kind of like come together because it's a nice way to kind of, you know, wrap the thing. And then um, if I get a chance, well, no, actually in the middle or the end of the semester, it doesn't matter. Um, the next class, I have a debriefing with each student about what happened. Well, the thing we just talked, I do that with a student. Right. Because I don't trust the student to understand it on their own, right? Because I mean, what kind of teacher would I be if I didn't? Um, and that's really important. And if, if you're a student and you have a review and your teacher is not going to help you with understanding and translating and, and digesting or comprehending what was said, you tell the teacher, hey, can we talk about what happened? Because they said this, I didn't understand it. They said this, I felt like that was unfair. You know, and the teacher will give you some context. The, and the why, how, what, right? So the example of the door is something I just used because right. you said it. Um, I don't mean to say that the why, like, why did they say that? Because it's to code that I need to have X number of doors. I don't mean that. I mean, I mean, that's potentially it, uh, part of it too. But I mean, even in the context of the review and the people, why did they say it? They say that because no one else was saying anything. I just need to throw something out. Mm -hmm. Did they say it because of who they are? They're a freaking code person. Okay, well that tells you something about the, 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 the. The array well, of architects. Yeah, in the, profession. the level of feedback you're getting from that person, <laughs> For right? Sure, yeah. You know, did they say it because um, they panicked? Like, do you need to read the room? Right. It's the same thing when you're talking with the client. You can't just listen to what they say. Why phone calls are better than emails, why in-person is better than phone calls. There's all these nuances of what's happening in the moment, which informs what people think and say, because most people are subject to changing based on the dynamics of all the things happening, because they don't have the the will to just kind of like be consistent, right? And you need to recognize that and take that into to consider it. That's a huge, huge factor, right? Right. Um, and... Uh, Again, not all information is equal in the designing of a project and certainly in the feedback of a project. It's not the case, right?